Bunyan's Last Sermon Preached, 1688 By John Bunyan This is recorded to celebrate the 8th anniversary of LibriVox. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Algy Pug Bunyan's Last Sermon Preached July 1688 Which were born not of blood, nor by the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. John 1, 13 The words have a dependence on what goes before, and therefore I must direct you to them for the right understanding of it. You have it thus. He came to his own, but his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them which believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, but of God. In the words before, you have two things. First, some of his own rejecting him when he offered himself to them. Secondly, some of his own receiving him and making him welcome. Those that reject him he also passes by, but those that receive him he gives them power to become the sons of God. Now, lest any one should look upon it as good luck or fortune, says he, they were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. They that did not receive him, they were only born of flesh and blood, but those that receive him, they have God to their father. They receive the doctrine of Christ with a vehement desire. First, I will show you what he means by blood. They that believe are born to it, as an heir is to an inheritance. They are born of God, not of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God, not of blood, that is, not by generation, not born to the kingdom of heaven by the flesh, not because I am the son of a godly man or woman. That is meant by blood. Acts 17.26 He is made of one blood all nations. But when he says here, not of blood, he rejects all carnal privileges they did boast of. They boasted they were Abraham's seed. No, no, says he, it is not of blood. Think not to say you have Abraham to your father. You must be born of God if you go to the kingdom of heaven. Secondly, nor of the will of the flesh. What must we understand by that? It is taken for those vehement inclinations that are in man to all manner of looseness, fulfilling the desires of the flesh. That must not be understood here. Men are made the children of God by fulfilling their lustful desires. It must be understood here in the best sense. There is not only in carnal men a will to be vile, but there is in them a will to be saved also, a will to go to heaven also. But this it will not do, it will not privilege a man in the things of the kingdom of God. Natural desires after the things of another world, they are not an argument to prove a man shall go to heaven whenever he dies. I am not a free willer, I do abhor it. Yet there is not the wickedest man, but he desires some time or other to be saved. He will read some time or other, or it may be pray. But this will not do. It is not in him that wills, nor in him that runs, but in God that shows mercy. There is willing and running, and yet to no purpose. Romans 9.16 Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, have not obtained it. Here I do not understand as if the apostle had denied a virtuous course of life to be the way to heaven, but that a man without grace, though he have natural gifts, yet he shall not obtain privilege to go to heaven and be the Son of God. Though a man without grace may have a will to be saved, yet he cannot have that will God's way. Nature it cannot know anything but the things of nature. The things of God knows no man but by the Spirit of God. Unless the Spirit of God be in you, it will leave you on this side the gates of heaven. Not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but 
of God. It may be some may have a will, a desire that Ishmael may be saved. Know this, it will not save thy child. If it were our will, I would have you all go to heaven. How many are there in the world that pray for their children, and cry for them, and ready to die? And this will not do. God's will is the rule of all. It is only through Jesus Christ, which were born, not of flesh, not of the will of man, but of God. Now I come to the doctrine. Men that believe in Jesus Christ to the effectual receiving of Jesus Christ, they are born to it. He does not say they shall be born to it, but they are born to it, born of God, unto God, and the things of God, before they receive God to eternal salvation. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now unless he be born of God, he cannot see it. Suppose the kingdom of God be what it will, he cannot see it before he be begotten of God. Suppose it be the gospel, he cannot see it before he be brought into a state of regeneration, believing is the consequence of the new birth, not of blood, nor of the will of man, but of God. First, I will give you a clear description of it under one similitude or two. A child, before it be born into the world, is in the dark dungeon of its mother's womb. So a child of God, before he be born again, is in the dark dungeon of sin, sees nothing of the kingdom of God. Therefore it is called a new birth. The same soul has love one way in its carnal condition, another way when it is born again. Secondly, as it is compared to a birth, resembling a child in his mother's womb, so it is compared to a man being raised out of the grave, and to be born again is to be raised out of the grave of sin. Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee life. To be raised from the grave of sin is to be begotten and born. Revelations 1.5 there is a famous instance of Christ. He is the first begotten from the dead. He is the first born from the dead, unto which our regeneration alludeth. That is, if you will be born again by seeking those things that are above, then there is a similitude betwixt Christ's resurrection and the new birth, which were born, which were restored out of this dark world, and translated out of the kingdom of this dark world, into the kingdom of his dear Son, and made us live a new life. This is to be born again, and he that is delivered from the mother's womb, it is the help of the mother. So he that is born of God, it is by the Spirit of God. I must give you a few consequences of new birth. First of all, a child, you know, is incident to cry as soon as it comes into the world, for if there be no noise, they say, it is dead. You that are born of God, and Christians, if you be not criers, there is no spiritual life in you. If you be born of God, you are crying ones. As soon as he had raised you out of the dark dungeon of sin, you cannot but cry to God, What must I do to be saved? As soon as ever God had touched the jailer, he cries out, Men and brethren, what must I do to be saved? Oh, how many prayerless professors are there in London that never pray? Coffee houses will not let you pray. Trades will not let you pray. Looking glasses will not let you pray. But if you were born of God, you would. Secondly, it is not only natural for a child to cry, but it must crave the breast. It cannot live without the breast. Therefore, Peter makes it the true trial of a newborn babe. The newborn babe desires the sincere milk of the word, that he may grow thereby. If you be born of God, make it manifest by desiring the breast of God. Do you long for the milk of promises? A man lives one way when he is in the world, another way when he is brought unto Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 66 They shall suck and be satisfied. 
if you be born again there is no satisfaction till you get the milk of god's word into your souls isaiah sixty six eleven to suck and be satisfied with the breasts of consolation oh what is a promise to a carnal man a whorehouse it may be is more sweet to him but if you be born again you cannot live without the milk of god's word what is a woman's breast to a horse but what is it to a child there is its comfort night and day there is its succour night and day oh how loath is he it should be taken from him minding heavenly things says a carnal man is but vanity but to a child of god there is his comfort thirdly a child that is newly born if it have not other comforts to keep it warm than it had in its mother's womb it dies it must have something got for its succour so christ had swaddling clothes prepared for him so those that are born again they must have some promise of christ to keep them alive those that are in a carnal state they warm themselves with other things but those that are born again they cannot live without some promise of christ to keep them alive as he did to the poor infant in ezekiel seventeen i covered thee with embroidered gold and when women are with child what fine things will they prepare for their child oh but what fine things has christ prepared to wrap all in that are born again oh what wrappings of gold has christ prepared for all that are born again women will dress their children that every one may see how fine they are so he in ezekiel sixteen eleven i decked thee also with ornaments and i also put bracelets upon thine hands and a chain upon thy neck and i put a jewel upon thy forehead and earrings in thine ears and a beautiful crown upon thine head and says he in the thirteenth verse thou didst prosper to a kingdom this is to set out nothing in the world but the righteousness of christ and the graces of the spirit without which a newborn babe cannot live unless he have the golden righteousness of christ fourthly a child when it is in its mother's lap the mother takes great delight to have that which shall be for its comfort so it is with god's children they shall be kept on his knees isaiah sixty six eleven they shall suck and be satisfied with the breasts of her consolation verse thirteen as one whom his mother comforteth so will i comfort you there is a similitude in these things that nobody knows of but those that are born again fifthly there is usually some similitude betwixt the father and the child it may be the child looks like its father so those that are born again they have a new similitude they have the image of jesus christ galatians four every one that is born of god has something of the features of heaven upon him men love those children that are likest them most usually so does god his children therefore they are called the children of god but others do not look like him therefore they are called sodomites christ described children of the devil by their features the children of the devil his works they will do all works of unrighteousness they are the devil's works if you are earthly you have borne the image of the earthly if heavenly you have borne the image of the heavenly sixthly when a man has a child he trains him up to his own liking he learns the customs of his father's house so are those that are born of god they have learned the custom of the true church of god there they learn to cry my father and my god they are brought up in god's house they learn the method and form of god's house for regulating their lives in this world seventhly children it is natural for them to depend upon their father for what they want if they want a pair of shoes they go and tell him if they want bread they go and tell him so should the children of god do do you want spiritual bread go tell god of it 
do you want strength of grace ask it of god do you want strength against satan's temptations go and tell god of it when the devil tempts you run home and tell your heavenly father go pour out your complaints to god this is natural to children if any wrong them they go and tell their father so do those that are born of god when they meet with temptations go and tell god of them the first use is this to make a strict inquiry whether you be born of god or not examined by those things i laid down before of a child of nature and a child of grace are you brought out of the dark dungeon of this world into christ have you learned to cry my father jeremiah three sixteen and i said thou shalt call me thy father all god's children are criers can you be quiet without you have a belly full of the milk of god's word can you be satisfied without you have peace with god pray you consider it and be serious with yourselves if you have not these marks you will fall short of the kingdom of god you shall never have an interest there there is no intruding they will say lord lord open to us and he will say i know you not no child of god no heavenly inheritance we sometimes give something to those that are not our children but not our lands oh do not flatter yourselves with a portion among the sons unless you live like sons when we see a king's son play with a beggar this is unbecoming so if you be the king's children live like the king's children if you be risen with christ set your affections on things above and not on things below when you come together talk of what your father promised you you should all love your father's will and be content and pleased with the exercises you meet with in the world if you are the children of god live together lovingly if the world quarrel with you it is no matter but it is sad if you quarrel together if this be amongst you it is a sign of ill breeding it is not according to rules you have in the word of god dost thou see a soul that has the image of god in him love him love him say this man and i must go to heaven one day serve one another do good for one another and if any wrong you pray to god to right you and love the brotherhood lastly if you be the children of god learn that lesson gird up the loins of your mind as obedient children not fashioning yourself according to your former conversation but be ye holy in all manner of conversation consider that the holy god is your father and let this oblige you to live like the children of god that you may look your father in the face with comfort another day End of Bunyan's Last Sermon Preached 1688 By John Bunyan